Hello, well this one's a bit of a different one. Um, we've been out snorkeling today and have a look in the bucket. We found a couple of edible urchins. Great big massive edible urchins. So throughout lockdown I've been watching the fish locker and Hayes Outdoors and they do some absolutely brilliant videos to do with fishing and sea life and lobsters and all that kind of stuff and I didn't want to just try and copy something that they've already done I haven't seen them do anything with this so uh, we've got it and we're going to just have a look at it under a UV light in the glamorous surroundings of the downstairs toilet with the lights off and then we're off back down the beach to have a cook up and stick in an omelette so got two of them and they don't seem to be moving quite as much but I don't know if you can see up here underwater the little antenna legs this one's starting to move a bit more now that was a little bit of an anti-climax we're now huddled in the downstairs toilet with the UV torch, but there's not a lot happening. I thought they were going to maybe look like a snake, like an enemy, and uh, but they don't. Right, folks, we've got all uh, James Martin on location, doing a bit of cooking on the fine Northumbrian coast uh, at Drewridge Bay. So we're going to uh, cook up these edible urchins that we got earlier and we've got some langoustines, prawns. Um, got these from a, a local fisherman fairly recently. Been in the freezer. And uh, a lot of the local boats have been struggling to sell abroad with COVID and everything. So they've been selling to Joe Public off the quayside. It's been brilliant. We've had quite a few uh, nice little bargains and obviously supporting the local fishermen. So it's been spot on. So I've got the water on the boil there. And as soon as that's up to a boil, as you'll know, watch the fish locker, pop them in, get it to a rolling boil again, another two minutes. I might give them a little bit longer to be fair because. Um, they're not quite frosted properly, so I'll probably end up with food poisoning. I could be dead soon, so if I am, it's been nice knowing you. Okay, we're up to a rolling boil with this now, so we're going to pop the mangosteens in and then we can get prepping on the urchins. That's uh, nice clean seawater in there. You know. I'm trying to be careful with them because I want to keep the shells when I'm finished. So if you're not familiar with these, they're edible urchins. We found them today while we were snorkeling up in the body sea. Alan Metalman's watching. Alan, the world in his dog has seen the publicity from your videos and they're now walking the dogs in the new on the sea. It's a bloody nightmare. You can't get parked within about three miles of the beach. So uh, if you're thinking about going on a staycation in North London, I can highly recommend the Lake District because I'm sick of not being able to park for free. Anyway, my little rant over. So we've never found these as big as these. We have found one earlier in the year which we've got and we give it a little bit of a, a taste test. Um, but the prickly little things, 
quite nice in the colour, purples and pinks and everything. And what you can do um, to open them up is you can get two spoons back to back, jab a couple of spoons in and then leave them apart and it will crack the shell open and let you into the inside. However, I want to keep the shells because um, they just make nice little ornaments and stuff. You know, it's a, it's a nice looking little thing and it, they do lose the colour after they've, um, once they're deed, but that's, they still look nice. So, can you pass us the uh, bushcraft knife back there? So I'm going to show you how I do it, which is if you just go to the underside and then just take a knife and just cut yourself a little hole in the bottom. Load of water in there. Don't let it run up your elbow. Drain it off. And then we want to be getting the row out the inside. Gadget comes out the inside. And then it's a case of getting your finger in. It's a bit like uh, cleaning out the inside of a pumpkin, really, just scraping out what's in there. The meaty bit. You gain a lot of meat, really, for the size of the animal that it is. Same thing with the second one. Oh, look. I'm glad I'm doing this here. They're all over the flipping carpet. Japan. 
it is a delicacy. Although there's lots of things that are a delicacy in Japan, aren't there? Jobs are good, it'll do. So, all we're going to do with the Langesteins, I'm going to sit and pick at the flow of lighter, but all you've got to do, give them a little twist, just like a little lobster. And just peel away at the shell. Right, so into the pan, some olive oil. We'll have a bit of a close-up shot. Look at that. So just while we're on, this is uh, Drew Ridge Bay. You're probably not picking up fantastically with this camera, but we're towards the north end here. Um, stretches all the way down for about seven miles down to Creswell Bay and then heading up further north you'll end up with uh, Hawksley is the next place and then up to Amble and round the corners Coca Island or as James Martin said Cockett Island it was a fantastic cookery program he did around Bambra Castle um, Amble you know he went round supporting all the local shops and getting all the local produce, it was a brilliant programme until he gets on a boat and goes over to Cockett Island Cockett as you can tell in my mother tongue of Northumbria anyway, back to the cooking Oh, I think we've got a bit of stickage going on Haze Outdoors video, at this point, he'd probably go, mm, that's like melting your mouth, give it zen and all that kind of stuff. Well, this isn't a Haze Outdoors video, and this is, I mean it tastes alright for an omelet, don't get me wrong, but it's not, um, it doesn't have a lot of taste. and it up with a bit of hot crap. 
Creeper. Bit of black pepper. together to make a Richard the Third. There's a possibility this might take three weeks to cook now. Let's get in there. Let's definitely get in there. It took a while to cook because I think there was probably out of six eggs I think there was maybe two in the last one and now there's four in this one. So it's, it's a proper thick omelette. But the cameraman's buggered off down the beach. Oh. What you got? Oh, that's knackered, isn't it? I'll take that and chuck it in the bin. Oh well, it's uh, it's slightly better than the crocodile than the you can live on it but it tastes like shit kind of food. But it's definitely not lobster or sea bass or cod. It's um, yeah, it's in the Vauxhall Conference I think when it comes to seafood that one. But we've given it a, give it a whirl. Something that I uh, haven't seen the fish locker do. So, John, crack on and have a go at that and see what you think. You've got no better to do. Anyway, catch you on the next one. Right. 